The third week of former President Donald Trump's criminal trial wrapped up in New York earlier today. The former president blasted the case and the gag orders against him. One key part of the trial going on right now is audio recordings. One file played for the jury today included a conversation between Michael Cohen and Trump back in September 2016. That's when the two were discussing how to handle repaying National Enquirer publisher David Pecker for squashing allegations by a former Playboy model Karen McDougal about her alleged affair with Trump. So joining me now is Chief Legal Analyst Khalif Rhodes. Um, audio obviously um, having a big impact in any trial, but uh, what else did we hear today? Th this is a connected dots trial, regardless of, of, I've said this a couple times, no matter how many key players we try to put in this, it's about documents, 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 documents. Did you make this payment? Was it a lawful payment? Did you try to cover it up? And how did you cover it up? Well, first we got to establish that you made a payment and that you had knowledge of this payment. This whole time is, hey, I was just paying my legal fees. Well, all they've done the whole time is create this appearance of a paper trail. Okay, you have David Pecker talk about I made this arrangement. You have these other random folks that they have in there that talk about creating documents. Um, they talked about the, the the person that does their, their hearings. A number of people have been in there that were kind of boring, except for yesterday and today. I think that testimony was dynamic. But all of these are just laying the foundation for did he know that that defensive I did not know and I was just doing my job will not work here because they're using your own voice to say, hey, I knew exactly what I was paying you back for. I wasn't you paying you back because you went and represented me at some court hearing. I was paying you back because you ended up paying someone else that covered a case for us. Well, yeah, what kind of impact is having evidence, not just testimony, but either audio or video or just something you can physically show the jury? What kind of impact does that have on, on their decision? It depends on what it is. You know, if it's something tangible that they can touch, I really think that helps in trial. If I got pictures, I want to be able to show that. Um, if the DA has pictures or video of my client, I don't want them to show that. It really just depends on the moment. But when you're in a case like this, that is paper, you want to bring it to life because no juror wants to sit there and look at documents, although they don't want to see transaction number 55 in a line item. Nobody wants to see it. That's a snoozer. You saw a couple times when they had those kind of lame jurors. You hear a number of people, the witnesses, I should say, people mention that jurors were fidgeting in their seat. They were closing their eyes. They were rocking back and forth. That will put anybody to sleep. And so you have to try to find ways to bring it back up to life. If you got someone's voice on audio tape, excellent. You got video, even better. So those are all three helpful to make them connect it to a real life thing. Papers suck in jury trials, but you need them because they got to show the paper trail some way. And you have to look at them again. And when you go back to make your verdict, you have to be able to reference back to something, right? So um, also taking the witness stand today was uh, former Trump aide Hope Hicks, and she had a lot to say. She was testi uh, testifying up until I came about out here at about 3.50. She was on the stand for a while. I mean, in, in comparison to David Pecker, who was on there for a number of days, it, that's small. But I, I didn't anticipate her being on the stand that long. But, I mean, she came off as someone that was very likable, and so um, it could help both sides. You can't really attack her if you're the defense. Um, she is a Trump loyalist, so she'll know someone that she's someone that would have been behind the scenes, knew everything about him, his inner workings. She said a couple times, like, if you work there, it was a major successful company, but it was like a family. So if you work for the for the president in his company, everybody kind of worked with him. He had his hands in everything. Another nod to him saying, I didn't know anything. She's kind of contradicting that because she said, well, actually, he knows everything about the entire company. He knows every moving part. But I also can say what she did is she allowed herself to establish some credibility of I knew exactly what was happening. And so if the defense tries to say, well, she also didn't know what was happening. She says, I talked to Pecker. I talked to Cohen. I talked to the president. And when I found out about this, he told me exactly what to say to deny it. And I didn't believe it at the time, but I still did it because I was very committed to the president. They haven't spoken in the last two years, so I don't know if that relationship has diminished during his time. But what I can say is she came off is extremely credible, extremely likable and extremely consistent. All right. Well, we might continue to hear from her in into next week, uh, but uh, this will again continue next week. I know they have a couple days off. So, uh, Khalif, thank you. We'll